cannot be careful if there's a you know, lunatic running around campus with a gun. But I don't know what you can do, you know. It's like, it has never happened before. For me, I have no experience with a gunman running around a campus. I'm an international student, so this is like new and bizarre to me. It took me like 15 minutes straight to explain my father what happened. And he couldn't just understand how a person can just come into a university or a high school and just shoot people. The motive is doing as much damage as they can and that's terrifying you know, for a student. You know, they have a gun, we have no defense. You know, and the, the cops came, they did their jobs. But they couldn't find them in time. Three people died, five got shot. You know, it's like a very serious issue here. Live from downtown Detroit, it's No BS News Hour with my main man, Stoney! Na 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 NABOSHIT! Hey! 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 breaking news. Dub or bullshit! Dub or bullshit! Well that man right there, Ray. That was well said, that, that young man. This is where you talk, Ray. All right, listen. I, you know, I had to take me a little snooze before I drank the rest of this booze, but I'm glad to be here on the show. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. I'm going to try to give a legal perspective to it and see how we can chop it up in this next hour. Beautiful. Look at this love guy. This, look at this. This is, uh, if you, ladies and gentlemen, don't know, this is Ray Plea Bargain Page. <laughs> this guy works in the Wayne County courts third circuit court this is the guy he's the defender guys in with a weapons charge him murder how many murder cases you done i probably did about five to six hundred over 35 years you hear me there now this this is the perspective this is what you need this is plain spoken ray page the guy is a titan here so he's gonna lay that out um i don't is this is difficult karen so i i'm gonna before we we, we want to introduce our sponsors so we don't have to interrupt this knowledge that we're about to do so but before i do that i just want to name the victims they deserve it they say that a person dies twice once when their heart stops and the other time is when their name is spoken for the last time so they're they're alive ariel anderson alexandria verner Brian Fraser. And there are others clinging to life, not to bum you out. Let's get into this. We have some exclusive material here. We've been working it. I'm very proud of Zach Scrow, baby Jesus. He went up there and he worked it. It's important to him. That's his community. Went to school there. You went to school there, Ray. Law school, yeah. I'm yes. Detroit College of Law at Michigan State. Yes, thanks for the plug. Your son's going to medical school there. Absolutely. Karen went there. If it's got Michigan in it, it's all of ours. Yeah, and we don't want it to pass away. It's just another one in a totem board. You know what I mean? Right. Let, let's, let's break this thing apart. But as we do that, it's difficult to do. But again, if you like the show and you're part of this community, please patronize the people that make the show possible. If you scroll right down there, that is a punchki coney. Yes, that is a punchki, which is a Polish pastry. This is for Fat Tuesday because Lent comes on Wednesday. There it is. Is it one day only? One day only. It's Tuesday. Look at this. How many cows does this thing got? <laughs> it's a punchki. It's a glazed Polish pastry with the coney, all the fixings, sweet and savory. They sell like thousands of these. Every Tuesday. Then Wednesday, come, or every after Wednesday, every Friday comes that delicious fish sandwich here at the American Coney. I mean, the fish is Pollock. It's Atlantic po uh, Pacific Pollock. It's delicious. Better than cod. Yeah, it is, isn't it, Karen? Better than yes. cod. The lettuce is fresh. Can't even find lettuce. Tomatoes fresh. The buns are steamed. Unbelievable. But come Tuesday, get to Punchki. Mark? Yeah. You want to stuff that down your gullet there, bro? 
Go ahead. Come over and get it. Come over and get it. <laughs> I got one here, believe it or not. Yeah. Oh, I thought you this, did. This is be I a mess. thought you did. And you'll be eating that one I later. Mean, I got to say, anything for the show. Okay. Anything for the... <laughs> I mean, not because I'm fat and I like to eat. Ah, uh, Mark. I feel what? bad for the man's body image. If Why? I have if I have a body image, imagine his body image, Ray. <laughs> We're talking about. <laughs> I hear it go straight to Wait, the neck. Quiet. You hear that? That's his arteries hardening. Oh man! Oh, Don't say that, Charlie. Okay, well, this is arteries it's getting true. soft because it's the magic of the punchki. And by the way, Mark, it listen, is good. Okay, keep remember. eating, bro. But I recommend you get your life insurance from Legacy Partners. <laughs> you like that? Right? You, like, you like that transition? Listen, I've been telling you about how they can help you with Medicare. They can help you with your boat. Your RV, your motorcycle, your home, if I didn't say that already, your life insurance. They shop for you. They get you to low. I, do you know I, I got more insurance, Ray, at $1,000 less? Is that right? I mean, just a magical $1,000. I got more for less. You got the wrong underwriters. This sounds to me, <laughs> it's like voting for president. I got less for more, and they flip it right over. <laughs> All right, they're independent, so they shop for a year. Here's what you do, 586-209-4106. They'll get back to you that day. If they don't, you call me. I'll make sure. That's a promise between me and this vast community we're building. 586-209-4106, Legacy Partners. That's who I use for insurance. Uh, Luke Nowacki, guy called it. Yeah. Overreaction is not the strategy. Hit not it. at all. This message of Uplift is brought to you by business and personal wealth advisor Luke Nowacki, who reminds you that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but never enter the kingdom of God? But while you're waiting, Nowacki wants you to remember that overreaction is not a sound financial strategy. So call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748 for sound financial advice. And let me tell you about Hall real quick. Mortgage interest rates are the lowest they've been in over five months, and the majority of Hall financial clients are locking in rates in the fives. In the fives. Okay. Use the equity in your home to put yourself in a better financial situation. If you've got one, lower your note. It's the most affordable way to eliminate credit card debt. A Ray, write this down. Do you have a house? Yeah. Are you writing any of this down? <laughs> well, listen, listen. My house is uh, went to my last three wives, so I don't. Need to write it down. <laughs> what are you, the salt in the Brunei? You got three wives in there. Like one gets the bathroom, one gets the powder room, and one gets the garage. Yeah, they, they, they all increased their zip codes as a result of me. So, they, you know. so you're renting, right? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> That's Ray plea bargain. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm broke. I'm pleading. I'm pleading with you. Give me a bargain. <laughs> Listen, a free five-minute mortgage re review with Hall Financial is all it takes to see how much money you've gained in home equity. Marie doesn't have one. The majority of all, but you still have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, wait, come on over here. Right, you, right. Get ready. Write this down. The majority... <laughs> The majority of Hall uh, financial loans close in two weeks or less, meaning you get your money faster. Whether you're looking to purchase a new home or refinance your current home, you need to call Hall Financial first. That ready? This is a difficult one. 866-CALL-HALL. 866-CALL-HALL. Wait, look at that. I got him in the commercial. I, I, look at that. I passed the bar one Hey, time. David, David, I mean, thanks for supporting the show. You see what we do? We got Ray, Ray Plea Bargain Page over here doing commercials for you. Listen, or you can just chat online with them at callhallfirst.com. 5,000 or more, last time I checked, more than 5,000 five-star reviews, bro. Fact. That's fact. Okay, you ready? Ready to get in this, Karen? Yep. All right. What do we know? Let me make sure I get this business right. Okay. Anthony Dwayne McRae, he got two legally purchased pistols. And he goes on a rampage where your baby is improving himself. Not acceptable. But let's start with this. Now, McRae was picked up in 2019, Ray, for having a loaded pistol concealed without a permit. Is that a felony? 
It's a call a carry and conceal weapon, uh, you know, without a license or permit. It's a four year maximum felony. It's normally probationable if it's your first time offense and it does not carry a mandatory two years with it. A lot of people have the confusion, believe that if you have a gun, it automatically gets you two. But you got to uh, <clears throat> have the gun plus be in commission of some kind of felony. Okay, you got to be robbing a liquor store. Something like that. You got to have uh, drugs with you. Yeah, kidnapping, drugs. Breaking into a house. Breaking into a house. Okay, yeah. so first of all, people got that incorrect. It's not like he was going to be stuck with a two-year felony if they charged them for carrying without a permit. Right. The two-year felony is a mandatory two years in jail, and you got to go to Jackson Prison on that. So what he was stopped for was a uh, CCW, and it was not attached to a felony firearm. And now, so the judge has the discretion here. Okay, he's char the, pro the whole system, Ray. You work Wayne County, for fuck's sake. How many of these things do you see? Hundreds and hundreds of them each year. I mean, uh, I don't know how many CCW cases I've done over 35 years, but uh, it's not unusual for a person to be stopped with a gun. You know, we have an open carry law here. You know, it's easy to get a CPL, and a lot of the judges have loosened up on um, how serious they consider the offense of carrying a weapon is since it's so easy to get a license now. And uh, if you put everybody in jail that was carrying a weapon, you wouldn't have any jails to put people in. We'd have 40 million people in jail, and we can't even handle what we got Absolutely. now. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So this isn't you go away like we're hearing, you know, the Soros uh, prosecutor. What's her name? Carol Seaman? She resigned, yeah. right? Yeah. She wasn't going to hit anybody with any felony gun stuff unless it was in commission of a serious crime but she could have charged the guy as you're saying with a felony given him zero time made him pick up litter right and and put a felony on his record so he couldn't get a legal firearm absolutely you know but uh you know there's so many variations of sentencing and ways that judges and prosecutors and defense lawyers deal with these issues and so uh, in this particular case you look look back and do tuesday or monday night uh, review of what happened on Sunday and you say well we should have done that but that's an easy way to approach it but the hard part of it is what do we do in the future to prevent these things from happening again okay let's stop there Karen for a second well well done dude god you're, you're good at this so you can fill in here anytime brother well you listen we could call it the Ray Page show <laughs> No, no, this is this is this is, this is, uh, this is rock bottom plea bargain. That's what you do. We're gonna call in and call in. And let's make a deal, all right? But uh, this is a uh, uh, baby J, Zach Grow, growing, and he went up to Lansing, and I haven't seen it because I I want to be surprised and see the man's growth, and I want to see what he did, and I'm told he made a a, a beautiful poem here, so I I want to roll that before we go any farther. My name's Zach Scro, better known to most as Hippie Jesus from NBN NewsHour. I'm an alumni. MSU is my home. And yesterday, someone broke into my home and hurt my family. So I felt the need to come here and check on my brothers and sisters to see how they were holding up. It wasn't good. The first thing I saw was vultures on the corner doing their cookie cutter interviews. It made me sad, and then it made me sick. And I wondered if these people even bothered to walk through campus to really understand how it had changed. Some of my friends worked at the union that night. I was really fucking, I was really worried when the night came. Um, and just it's just uh, it's just baffling that they 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 were gonna hit the school. I always had a feeling they were gonna hit this school, but I never thought it would it would be it would be like that. The only thing I ever had to worry about, you know, going through campus with my friends was getting an MIP, yeah. and never felt unsafe. Where are you at? I think generally there's a sense of insecurity, um, and I feel it too. I heard somebody suggest uh that um they have like id locks on all buildings instead of just residential halls 
I think that's probably a good idea. Um, you know, I, I don't really have much hope at a legislative level, unfortunately. Can you put into words what it's like now? I mean, I'm an international student, so this is like new and bizarre to me that a person can just come in a university or a high school and just shoot people. You know, their motive is doing as much damage as they can and they just kill themselves afterwards, you know? Their motive is doing as much damage as they can and that's terrifying, you know, for a student, you know? They have a gun, we have no defense, you know? And the, the cops came, they did their jobs, but they couldn't find them in time. Three people died, five got shot. It took them so long to like, I don't even think they were officially caught to do. They, they, were, they spent four hours, like, we were like locked up in there for four hours. I feel like, I don't know, I'm no police officer. I don't know how hard that is, but I feel like they could have did a little bit better. So maybe just like improve the police situation a little bit. Just a little bit. So you would say it was kind of a dog and pony show and you didn't feel it was a sufficient job? Not entirely, no. A lot of my friends kind of said the same thing. They were like, why is it taking them so long? And like my cousin too, I was just talking to him this morning. We were just texting. They were, we were just like, it should not have, I just feel like it shouldn't have taken that long. How do you see yourself moving forward with your daily routines? I, I don't know, because it'll be hard for me because especially the events where they happen, like those are just normal study spots for me. And it's just hard to like go back knowing that something that bad happened there. So it, I think just time and um, just having to accept that something this bad happened at somewhere that I call home now. These folks aren't in a good place, and neither am I. The only answers I received today was maybe more police around campus and time. These kids still have to go to class. They still have to lead social lives. They still have to be young people. Will something ever come of this? Probably not. Looks like we're back to the same old bullshit. But here's to hoping. Hey, Karen, uh, we all uh, in the staff meeting asked you to look into how, how prevalent this is. Well, Charlie, I'm, I, I don't want to, I can, and I'm going to share some stats with you, but I don't want to do like everybody else has been doing, and that's crunching numbers and pushing stats to try to gain some understanding for something, you know, make, make something make sense that does not. Um, as the guy that Zach talked to said, I'm an international student. This is totally incomprehensible to him. Um, On-campus shootings have been documented since the 60s, 1966, at the University of Texas in Austin, where there were 31 people that were shot. I mean, certainly we always think about Virginia Tech um, in terms of, you know, collegiate on-campus shootings. That's the big, is that not the biggest that, mass shooting that, in that modern history? But the, so far, but this is the issue. There yeah. is not a universal definition for what a mass shooting is, including one for the FBI. They don't have a definition of what a mass shooting is. They have a definition of a mass murder. And so because there's not a universal definition, everybody categorizes what happens either on campus or in a school differently. So if, if you ask, what does that mean? It's too much, Charlie. I mean, we, we, we talked about Uvalde in 22, Sandy Hook, Columbine, those are schools, um, but universities, now and, Michigan State. And what you're saying, this is separate from what goes on at 7 in Southfield at a gas station. That, that Exactly. That's, or the that's, mall store. <laughs> you know, that's just considered every day. We don't even, even well, count that. We're, we're talking about, I don't know what we're talking about, Ray, but I'll say this. He gets picked up, okay? They He's charged with that felony. The prosecutor decides we're not doing a felony, so they come up with another charge. In my opinion, in my vast experience with all this, they made up a charge, which was possession of a firearm in a vehicle. They found the guy on a stoop, and he was riding a bicycle, but it's a charge. And he gets probation, and he... It's still not clear how he violated probation, but they extended his probation. Explain to me what that might mean. And we're talking Wayne County now, the most overburdened 
court system in the United States. There's no doubt about that. You are doing Superman well, work. So so there, go, there, go ahead. There's a m multiple ways that you can violate probation. One way to violate probation, people don't think about it, is you don't have the wherewithal to pay the fines and costs. And so that's a way that you can violate probation. Another way you might violate probation is that you didn't um, a attend a certain class or uh, 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 do enough uh, <clears throat> workforce uh, requirements. But at the end of the day, the judge has to make a decision, a balancing test between do I put this person in jail and take, have him take up space versus someone that's committed a very serious crime like armed robbery, kidnapping, murder. Uh, the last thing that uh, the people in our population want is those people um, <clears throat> that uh, commit these horrifying crimes, uh, kidnapping, murder, mayhem, rape. Would you rather let them out and put a guy charged with a gun, taking up that space? So the balancing test is this. Are we better off letting a guy that didn't really have any convictions or criminal record per se, had caught with a gun, if he had done the right thing, he was eligible, he was <coughs> eligible to get a CPL license if he just jumped through the courses. And so uh, I can understand how this thing happened, but at, on the flip side, the public has to understand that there's a lot more people walking the street that, was, um, <clears throat> that are walking the streets right now that have been let out in jail for more serious crimes. See that's fucked up. Well, it's it's you know I I don't know. Uh, can I say it's fucked up too? Oh, uh, please. Okay, lay. It is a different than a courtroom. I like it here. Yeah, keep going now. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, it is fucked up. And 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 the thing about it is, is that how we unfuck it up. Please. Uh, well, here's the deal. You start with our state legislators. They have to um, promulgate and and create laws that make certain things not within the judge's province. And I, I, I'm really a, a student against things like that, but we got to start somewhere. we got to fix something that's broke. So you're saying I'm not for mandatory anything, but it's getting so surly, out of hand, COVID, underfunded, that maybe we do. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely, because uh, the society... Well, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that now. I mean, you, I'm looking at the... Mm, you know, a woman of a certain age with the gray hair up there in Ingham County talking the opposite of what you're talking about. Uh, a black man of a certain age with no hair at all. You see what I'm saying? Like, are we getting caught up in politics and realities getting divorced from what they're doing? at the levels that we hire people, legislature, prosecutors, et cetera? Well, you know. I'm asking to be real I'm, here. I'm, I, the, real, the reality of it is is that where where do you start fixing it at? You, you can't fix it locally. You got to fix it by state statute and, and by promulgating, publishing new laws. Now, again, I'm not per se in favor of mandatory uh, sentencing in cases like this, but it has to start with a serious discussion in our legislature and with our governor and see where we can come together and try to repair some of this stuff. Okay, so Karen, if, if I might. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. If him, and then I, I, I know you're, mm -hmm. I always know you're itching. It's like <laughs> you, got, you got a tingle, I know. I got a tingle, you know. We're like family. So Ray, the guy, it's a serious thing to be carrying a loaded piece and it's not registered, you're not registered. He gets the slap on the wrist of probation and he doesn't honor it. How, this Detroit where you work, this Wayne County, Wayne, besides Detroit, Wayne County is a rough joint, right? True? Absolutely, but I've, I've worked all over the state of Michigan. I've had cases in Lansing and cases in Grand Rapids and Muskegon. And, you know, every uh, city and jurisdiction has different kinds of policies, but it's not unusual for a person in Wayne County to get probation or get a, a lesser included I charge uh, uh, to move the docket along. And, and to move the docket along. And by the way, here's my liberal side of like being from a real place. You caught the first time with a piece. We all live in America. We know what's going on. No, you shouldn't be doing 
jail slash prison, and it's a felony. That's prison time. There's a difference between jail and prison. Jail is a year or less. Absolutely. Prison is a year, year and a day. a day. There's a difference. Don't call it jail. It's prison. One state and one's county. But having said that, in the in your vast, vast experience, 600 murder cases, probably a 1,000 of these things, when a guy gets pimped on an illegal gun charge, how many of them flip their nose at the criminal justice system, tell the judge to fuck off, don't show up to the probation officer, what percentage would you put that at? Less than 20%. Less you know, than 20%, even in Detroit. Any, Even in Detroit, and, 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 and I don't... And I, I don't I, mean I, that as a put down to Detroit. Well. Detroit is big, is wild, it's vague. You can get lost in here. That's what I mean about it. It's the big city. Less than 20%. Less than 20%. You know, people come into the system, and there there's a core of certain people that are just... It's innate that they're going to continue to be uh, commit crimes. But the majority of people that come through the system are not repeat offenders. So let me pause and you so, there. Let and, me pause you there. So what does a judge give somebody who got a break on a gun charge and then you decided to fuck you to your probation terms? What, are the, what normally happens? Be honest. Second you know, chance? Do they get 30 days? What happens? Sometimes they go to jail for 30, 60 days, but if they continue to be uh, uh, snubbing the, and the nose at the system, a lot of them go to jail and some of them go to prison. And that happens. So when you make a plea deal, uh, by the way, we're speaking with Ray Plea Bargain Page. <laughs> when you're charged with the felony and the prosecutor lessens it, can the judge still hold the felony over your head if you don't make the terms of your misdemeanor? No, no. I mean, not in most cases. If if, if you plead to a misdemeanor and you violate uh, uh, the terms of that uh, misdemeanor, you know, the maximum for misdemeanors in Michigan, most of them are 93-day misdemeanors, but the kind of misdemeanor that he pled to was probably a year. So the maximum a person can do is max out on a year and you can't in jail. Bring, you can't bring the you felony back. You can't bring the felony That's back. That's illegal. Karen, I'm, I'm sorry, your turn. No, no, no. You're fine. I'm just thinking, and maybe this isn't the, the right question to ask an attorney, but Ray, I mean, aren't we just really talking about a system that's almost not set up to, to, to work? And, and I say that because you, you know, I mean, attorneys can be effective on both sides of the uh, of the aisle, if you will, or on both sides of the desk, it becomes it comes down to who can argue the same law to the best of their ability to represent their client. And at the end of the day, I mean, is it really? Does it really work? Yeah. Well, it, you know the system. The system is broke, Karen. You're absolutely right. But it's the best system that we got, and the best system we know. To mankind. I Pause mean, that if, a minute. If, if, if I'm, sorry, Ray, is, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry because we're brothers. We, you know, we're having a all cocktail. All right. It's it doesn't work. It's the best we got. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not till my dying breath on this earth doing anything but looking for something better, Ray. But well, if, you, if if you can come up with a better cookie cutter or system, then I implore <gasps> I implore you to. To, to to submit it on um, for evaluation. But right now this is the best that we got. N yes, it's underfunded. Yes, it's under police. Yes, the, uh, 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 there's not enough judges and there's not enough jail space. And one of the things, the big elephant in the room that we've not talked about and should be talked about is that um, we've got a lot of mentally ill people walking around the streets. This guy had a history of mental illness. Uh, there was no help for him. The Republicans years ago uh, got away from that. Get, got us away from the option of getting these people help, and now these are the unintended consequences of not having the right mental health care in this state. We got people got walking around here. Was, you got a guy that was shooting out of his back door, right? That, that that didn't send up any red flags. The neighbor said that you know, hey, we called the police. The police said that they didn't come. There were no wellness checks. I mean, on this guy, they everybody said he was a loner. That didn't send up any. So we have all these cracks that we continue to allow people to fall through. And this can be applied to everything, whether it's mental health, whether it's crime, whether it's education, whether it's the nursing homes. Our system is severely broken and the people that it's supposed to serve continue to suffer as a result while we just play the shell game with it. 
Well, society's broken. Isn't it not the system? The system's a reflection of the society and what people want. And you said earlier, we can do the blame game. Well, goddamn right, we're going to do the blame game. My brother fucks up, I'm blaming him. Right? Right, right. In, in this particular... Mental, again, in mental this, health. In this we're not building a hospital, and right. we're not doing gun laws. So we got shit in place right now that could have remediated this situation. There are red flags, as Karen said. Um, he was shooting outside the house. There were reports that neighbors were calling the police. Police did not respond. There was not a welfare check relative to the individual himself. I think I heard somewhere down the road that there was a welfare check for his dad. For I don't know what that means. Wait, hey, listen, that's professional. Because you know what? We got the video, bro. Oh, okay. okay, so here's All what right. we have. Uh, Baby J goes back to Lansing because he's committed to this story. And also, he was sk wearing skinny jean hiker pants when he <laughs> went there the first time that don't have room for your wallet. So he had them in his hoodie pocket and it fell out. So to be honest, he was going to look for his wallet. Uh, listen, uh, anybody in East Lansing, uh, Zach uh, Scrows his name. He, it's still at his mom's house. If you could send it to his mom's house, that would be great. Show that we're all together. But he went looking for it. And I go, you're in East Lansing. Go to the neighborhood. Because two hours before the chief of police is going to tell you this, Karen, mm -hmm. you'll, it'll be followed by what Zach heard from the neighbors. So, Mark, this is what the chief of police said around at 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. LPD has not responded to any welfare checks for Anthony McRae. There was a welfare check at the address on Howell Street on February 5th, but was not related to the accused. And LPD has not been called in any way to any shots fired at this address. Pause that. So what do we hear? Uh, we never got any uh, shots fired calls. We'll, get, we'll address it in a minute. But then he says, a week, a week before the mass murder in East Lansing, that the police got a call for a wellness check at the, well, he's dead, so I don't have to call him alleged shit. At the murderer's home where he lived with his dad? You want to tell us, Chief, what was the circumstances of the wellness check? Who called? Under what circumstance? Do you really think Ray, that's his place, that's his son's place, Karen, that's, her place, her kid's place, Zach, all of our place, that's all of our place? That's where we send our kids? You think you're getting away with that? Oh, you know, it's unrelated. What you mean it was unrelated? You mean dude was firing in the house and you didn't write it down, Ray? The system? We don't got enough money. Where's the system? Well, here's what I think is happening with the police chief. He knows, he knows or should know that a bunch of lawsuits are going to emanate from this. Oh, not fuck. only not only is, is the Lansing Police Department culpable, Michigan State uh, University uh, security might be um, <clears throat> might have a significant problem, and so a lot of people are going to be looking for ways to remedy this monetarily. You can't fix it, you know. You can't fix it mentally. Uh, people are going to be addressing this issue with lawsuits, and I, I'm sure that the Lansing. Police Department, East Lansing Police Department, and uh, Michigan State Security uh, Police, or the police on the campus there are going to be uh, sued, and the lawyers are, are lining up right now to figure out the kinds of actions to bring against those particular bodies. Now, we're, you know, you didn't say it, and it's leading. You might not have meant it, but what you're saying is the chief is bullshitting because he's hunkering down for the, the storm coming on him. We're not sure. We want, you know, we're not getting paid to be sitting in these bullshit press conferences and I'm trying to, my, my young uh, penis to Milo over here, <laughs> I'm going to teach this guy to be the sexiest, smartest journalist in the world. If he's sitting there, well, what do you mean you went over there? Because then he did go over to the neighborhood. This is one of, how many, Zach? How many neighbors you talked to? Four? Four. Four, they all have the same story? Yep. They call the police. Yep, they got there. shit on video. Yep. We don't got the video yet, but we're going to get that video. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's roll the neighbor, Ms. Bender. 
The cops have been called there for the shots being fired out the back door um, and, into the backyard. And to the best of your knowledge, was anything done about it? No. They were called and that the gun was fired out the back while the cops were there. That's the neighbor. She sound like a liar to you? No, she sounds very convincing. She, she, she doesn't have a reason to lie. I mean, if I, if I pick jurors every week and she seemed to be quite credible, quite credible. I, I saw no embellishment going on there. I saw she just told it like it was. And she's nervous because the whole world, something horrible happened and we want to know. Again, it stung me and not and in a good way, dude. When you said, dude, uh, we can Sunday, Monday morning quarterback this thing. You're right, but we can, we could maybe, maybe com prevented this. Maybe without any extra money. Without any extra laws, without any shit for hospitals that we're never going to get. You do have a prosecutor, Carol Seaman, who says basically, now you know, now this is where I want to get to, Detroit. When you telegraph to people, I'm no longer going to charge you a felony on these firearm shits, right? That says something to people carrying guns, and it says something to the police. Ah, man, fuck it, man, she ain't going to charge it anyway. You know what I mean? So we do the drive-by thing that that baby, way we showed up well in this check, and there's no record of it. Does, does that fit what you've seen in life? Well, you know, if you're in the streets and you you know that by carrying a gun up in East Lansing or Lansing or in that county that uh, it's not a priority, of course, you know, you walk around with a gun and, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, you get unintended consequences like you got here where someone with a gun, that got a misdemeanor, was eligible to buy two two guns, loaded them guns up, carried them magazines onto the campus, and caused all of this tragedy. And the tragedy is not just the fact that you got eight people that were shot, three are dead. I mean, the tragedy is the, the parents, the parents and the aunts uh. and the uncles and all the other people that are affected by this for the long term. And the post-traumatic stress that this is going to carry on to not only... Uh, the people that maybe was involved in the shooting, but the student body as a whole. So um, this is a for Michigan and for this country. This is a tragedy, and we. I'm glad we're talking about it. I'm glad you got people uh, on your staff or, or here investigating and doing the bright kind of journalism that you are noted for, Charlie. Stop the bullshit. And let's get deep into it and figure out what's going on. Mark's got a question, but before we do that, I think it's important to say the name of Ariel Anderson, Alexandria Werner, and Brian Fraser. I was just going to echo, um, let you know what someone wrote on Facebook. Donald um, said his niece was one of the victims, and he seems me. very pissed. He says, have the judge and, and assumably the prosecutor talk to my family and try to persuade us that she made the right decision. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Donald Neal. Is he here listening now? He is. Yeah. Donald, brother, I'm sorry. I'm, we know tragedy in my family. All of our families do. Once again, as Ray's saying, it, it it's a turnstile. It's all fucked up, dude. And again, this guy, no priors, no nothing. They give him. The misdemeanor, okay. I mean, d dude, it's Detroit. You, you, you can't. It's Brownstown. It's Livonia. It's Westland. It's New York City. You, we just can't lock everybody up. But then it comes to the probation, like Ray said, eighty percent of the people follow through with the probation. So now this guy should be on the radar. And then there's no doubt in my mind, like Ray said again, brilliant lawyer. The woman seems credible. There's no hiccup. There's no smarminess. There's no bullshit getting even. Zach did the reporting. We'll get more video because it takes video now. He should have been on the radar. Yep. But I can't, I, I'm not really going to go there with the prosecutor doing that. The, the wokeness kind of bums me out because it's making an excuse for shit. But I think that is correct. 
we we don't have enough room in the inn. But the minute you, that you flout your nose, that Ray will make a plea bargain for you. Honor it. You don't. You got to do. Like you said, something mandatory. You violate your probation on a weapons charge. Here's 45. And you won't pick up some garbage, motherfucker. And if you fuck up again, then you get a felony. You'll get another 45 days. But you notice. It, what's his name? D Donald. Donald. Mm -hmm. You notice that all these mass murders, not in the city, not on the corners, because apparently we don't care about that, but Uvalde and Michigan State and Oxford, and we can go on. They're done with legal weapons. You notice that? Yeah. So we could have stopped this guy because he didn't honor the terms of the break that society gave him. And then, like as Karen brought up, He's, he's taking pot shots off the porch yeah. and the chief of police is trying to tell me the neighbors are lying about it. Well, you know where we're going. You're going to be up there Sunday, motherfucker? Yeah. It's important. It's not Monday morning quarterbacking, bro. It's not. It's like we, we got the threadbare shit you're talking about that you thank you for being here. Threadbare shit. And we're not even doing that. And I'm not even going to blame the police. What the fuck, man? The prosecutor ain't going to charge anyway. Mm -hmm. I, di I did want to ask Ray a question, though, because you, you made reference to about how a lot of times it's just clearing the docket, right? Because they're so overwhelmed. I is the way to fix that, is it simply money or is it the way the system is set up and there's only so many judges that are allowed? I mean, what is the fix I'm sorry to that? interrupt. Yeah, do, please do. Sure no, no more. Uh, it's our show, but no more on this program do we call something as empty as the system. So use some fucking nouns. So we know what we're talking about and where we want to look. You got Ray. Is, is it as simple then as funding these courts or adding more judges? I mean, can they add more judges? Can they make new districts? I don't even know how that works. How do you clear up a docket to, so it works the way it's supposed to work? Yeah, we're, we're living, in, living in a post-COVID or continuing COVID environment. The COVID problem in itself backed the system up. How far? Much. Almost two and a half years. Two and a half fucking years. Two Donald, half. Donald. Two and a half years, dude. It is like passe, passe, passe. Move on. You right? got you got people. You got people in jail right now that's been there for almost two and a half, three years. That's unconstitutional. Not, not, of course it is, and have not had their day in court. And so the recorder's court, the Wayne County Circuit Court, and other courts around this state have their docket is so backed up. And so when you get a case like a, a CCW case, um, I can see chump change. I, I can see how a judge could say, hey, chump listen, I'm, I'm, I, we need to move this on. Uh, give them a misdemeanor. Not, don't send them into the jail space where we need to hold violent offenders. And so it's, it's fucked up, Karen. I, I know. And, it's, it, and that butt is there. It's fucked mm -hmm. up. No, I'm at because because I'm sorry, Kara, one of our regular listeners asking, what wasn't there something where they were releasing nonviolent uh, prisoners or offenders that were being uh, detained during COVID at one time? Yes, yes, yes. But uh, when you say nonviolent, it's just like what we're talking about today. Uh, this guy would be considered a nonviolent offender, a CCW, and they would have let him out of the jail. But you got people in jail right now for armed robbery, kidnapping, rape, murder, et cetera, capital cases that have, some have been waiting for at least two to three years. And really, and they're not really, but I want to say, say this with emphasis, they're still presumed to be innocent. Uh, of course. It, wow. that's, that's, that's a predication of American life. And not only the presumption of innocence, a fair and speedy trial. Absolutely. And it's garbage. It's gar Is this correct? Absolutely. It's and gar This is fucking Ray. Ray's, listen, man. Do you take on indigent? Do people call you? Does the uh, public defenders call you? How do you get your clients? I, I get my clients word of mouth, but yes. I do take, I do do some pro bono work and I do try to give back to the community. And uh, I do that as much as I can. And if somebody tried to reach me, they can call me 313-510-3335. Let's do it and again. 313-510-3335 or call me or, or email me at raypage1 
ymail.com. That's the letter Y, mail.com. Or they can try to find you, and you always know how to find well, them. Well, you know, you know we got guys in the can that listen to the program? Right, they, right. They don't miss it. They, they call in. If you're in the can and you're listening, call in. And then, you know, your voice is legitimate. Donald, I'm really... Um, I ain't going to say it, dude. It's uh, it's it's empty. Yeah, because, Charlie, we're going to be having this conversation, unfortunately, again mm. and again. You know, I was listening to the fake sniffles doing the press conference and the whole, you know, like, come on. Like, if this were really a priority, if, you know, and it's not just about gun laws. I do believe that there's a role and there's a place for that. But we live in a a, a gun induced <laughs> violent society where people, you know, they don't have mental health uh, support. They don't have uh, socioeconomic support and, and, and opportunities that they need. Everything is just fragmented and, at, and, and, and we're buckling under it every five seconds. And every one of us gun owners want the gun laws enforced, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I, can, I can see, I gave you my lefty. We're not going to lock everybody up. I'm going to give you my righty. We got enough laws. Fucking do it. Listen to Ray. Forget me. That's Ray. Ray's a famous motherfucker here. Not because he tap dances on a podcast. Because he does the work. Every time this happens, you wonder, Bob Becker, you're welcome here anytime, dude. Anytime. I appreciate this. It feels like home, but I, I wish we were talking about something more lighthearted than what's happened in uh, Michigan in the last week. It's funny you should say that. How's your three wives doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask their boyfriends. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Woo! Oh! Snap. That you know, that snap just like this punchki dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not the only one that got put out of your own. Well, you got put out of your own house. Red got put out of his wife's house, and he moved into the Normandy. And as I know, Canada, you've been dying. I've been yelling at him. I haven't watched it. I hope it's got good pacing because this is a dynamite segment. This is Red gets put out of the house. He moves into the flea bag motel up there on Woodward, and he tries to make the best of it. Trailers for sale or rent. Put me out the house, Room don't divorce me. Room for for 50 cents. No phone. All I know is what I got. No pet. Started from the bottom. I ain't got no cigarettes. Uh, but two hours of pushing broom. By the 8 by 12, 4 bedroom. I'm a man of means by no means. King of the road. Yeah, I've learned a lot since I've been staying here at the Normandy. For instance, the place opened in 1927. So 96 years old. A lot of people consider it Skid Row of Detroit. A lot of people have different perceptions of the type of people that stay here. But since I've been here, what I've learned is, is it's all types of people. And majority of them is just here trying to make a come up. Yeah, spending time around the Normandy, I ended up meeting some really cool people, like this one guy, Nick. He's really become a good friend of mine. Man, I'm at the Normandy, man, been here about two years, man. It's, you know, it's a step up or a step down, you know. Uh, you get up in here, man, it's like lions, tigers, and bears. You either gonna make it or you ain't gonna make it. Normandy is one of them places where, depending on your life situation, it can either be a come up or a trap. I wouldn't have been here number th probably two months. Wouldn't it took me number two months with, with the income I make doing trucking? Money ain't the issue. It's just getting into places that I want to do without the background check. But when the rent is so low and you're trying to build yourself up, sometimes you got to squalor your pride, think about what's at the end of the rainbow, and keep pushing. Yeah, after kicking it with my man Nick for a while, come to find out we have had similar experiences when it was coming to first moving into Norman. Moving up into Normandy, it was like, oh, hell no. The surroundings, the streets that I got to deal with, 
the people I got to deal with when I leave outside the building. Now, as far as the normally getting up in here, I feel secure because you can't get in these in this building without ID. You know, as far as the cleanliness, the big bugs, the how you present yourself, it's not, it's not, it's not something that I would suggest someone do unless they they got hard. You know. So when you leave your room. To go to the bathroom at the Normandy, and the, when you first move in, you don't know what the hell to really expect. Get you a bleach bottle. <laughs> don't, don't touch the walls while you're taking a shower. <laughs> and wear you some shower shoes. I mean, we talking low sitting ass toilets, radiator, heater, okay? Uh, concrete, you know this bathroom is never gonna be warm. It's nothing but concrete around. They ain't did the grout dirty looking even though i can smell that they've attempted to clean it it just has 96 years worth of urine smell in it and it will never go away and the one thing i immediately noticed was i was not about to have a private peaceful shit the funny part is for a while one of nick's jobs until he got into some permanent was he was a maintenance man here he worked in housekeeping and boy, do he have some stories. Man, it's been people up here 20 years. I went in one room. To see this dude every day, never thought he was like this. This fella had things that he was using on himself in there. That's basically all I can tell you. To go in there and clean something like that out. We had freaking did you do it? Man, it'd make you quit. To go in some of these showers, man, and find feces on the wall. It's like somebody was doing it in a bucket and was throwing it on the wall, man. It's like, man, it's sad, you know. You got people in here that does so many drugs, they run up and down the hall in their underwear, you know. You don't know what's going on. You got the police come in here, all they do is escort them out. The place need money and they let them back in. We had one jump from the fourth floor. We had a girl jump from the second floor. We, got a, we had a maintenance man get shot six times in the hall, in the staircase. It's stirs to tell up in here since I've been here just for my two years. So you can imagine 15 years, 20 years. Normandy is really a melting pot of every walk of life you could possibly think. Right. You got homeless people, you got prison people, you got, you got so many people up in here with jewelry. Y'all know what I'm talking about, around that anchor. Right. You know, right. the way you don't know what type of person you're dealing with. So be careful where you shit, you know? In other words, don't shit where you lay, you know? It's gonna be people see this and say, oh, I could never. But when it's the cheapest rent you can afford to put a roof over your head, make sure you got a foundation to keep moving in life and going, you'd be surprised where you could live. There's a lot of bad things I can say about this place, but the first thing I have to work on is me. So if I got anything bad to say about this place, then I'm not working on me. So all I can tell you is I'm positive about me. You know, keep me, continue to keep me in your prayers. For sure. And, and I'm out of here, man. You know, after talking to Nick and knowing him for some time, I, I, I got to say, I totally agree with his attitude and perspective of what this place really is about. It's a place where you can reflect and work on you to rebuild, reshape you, and get you together. And the longer I'm here, not only am I getting to learn a little bit more about myself, I'm getting to learn a little bit more about people. I'm a man of means by no means, king of the world. That, dude, was beautiful. Thank you, brother. Right? You got another room over there? Thank you. Hey. <laughs> At the, the turnover rate is very this high. This, this motherfucker got a condo in Southfield. He's like, wait a minute. Right. I was about to ask you, did you have a spare room? Where you at? <laughs> wait a minute. So your your ex, does she, how she, how she feeling about all this? Uh, Well, you know, in the beginning, it was, of course, a battle or whatnot. But she pretty much has just dealt with it, you know. She respecting you more that you're doing that? Not really, but, you know... Uh, <laughs> You make the best of a bad situation and you keep moving. This is that was beautiful, man. That's a, like that was a 
You've been doing these. That was a move. That was a move. Like, excellent Thank work. You. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Thank I'm you. I'm very proud of you. Happy Jesus. G great piece, man. Great piece. A really yeah. great piece. Good bro. reporting. Yes. Karen, I'm proud of you. I'm I'm proud of this place. We're not bullshit. Not at We're all. Doing, and thank you, man. Yeah. We're just establishing some something real in this shit. Well, thanks for having the confidence in me. And you got a beautiful team here. And I just expect a lot of great things coming forward from you guys. Okay, you come back anytime. Hey, thanks we Mark. enjoyed you, Ray. I'm going to be honest, man. you one of the best we've had, in my opinion. And you, you, you fit right in, man. Come back. Thanks a lot. And never quit on each other. Never, ever demand less. We can do better. Absolutely. He says so. Okay. Monday, Eric Mays. Oh, that's going to be good. And, and Hippie G is going to run. The, Mark's going on vacation. Hippie G is going to run the controls. So if it's fucked up, fuck not, you. Not my fault. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> See ya.